I'm happy to announce that Luminar Neo 1.10 is out and it includes some enhancements to layers and also the portrait background replacement feature that we've been waiting for. This means that the product is feature complete. It doesn't mean that there won't be any other updates or bug fixes or things of that nature. But as far as all the major features we were promised with Luminar Neo, it's now in the product and I wanna show you how it works. Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm a photographer just like you. And let's take a look inside. I wanna show you some of these features inside of Luminar Neo. Okay, so I have a portrait up shot on a gray background. And you'll notice over here on layers, there's just this layer for this portrait. On the menu over here, you'll see layer properties. This hasn't been here before. So now not only do we have our opacity, we also have our blend modes that we can show up, which is a nice feature. And then you've got obviously these options to flip back and forth. To get to the portrait background replacement, you go over to masking. So you've got the ones that we had before, the three brush linear gradient and radial gradient. Those have been in there for quite a while. In the previous major update, we had mask AI. Portrait background looks like another version of mask AI, but specifically for portraits. And I'm gonna show you how that works. So we have some mask options down here where we can like fill or clear, but let's go ahead and start off. We're just gonna click on portrait background. And you can see that there's a little animation and it starts off and it's analyzed the photo. This one didn't take so long because I've done this uh, particular photo before. And you have one option, remove. So let's click that. So it's doing this little analysis. Where is the subject? Where are the edges? And where is the background? And when you get done with that, you get something like this. So you'll probably see this familiar checkerboard that indicates that this is transparent. And then you can see there is some fine hair over here that's been masked out and you can see our portrait subject. We have a refinements brush. And this kind of reminds me of Topaz Mask AI where there are three different types. So where it says transition, that would be this edge between your subject and the background area. That's where you want to find these little fine hairs or something else that just needs a little bit more delicate masking. And this next one, object, you notice that the color of this button is the same as the color of the center. This is where you go in and if you need, wanna to add to this mask a little bit just to make sure that it knows that yes, this is my subject, this is the object I'm trying to do. And you don't wanna get this over into the areas where it needs to do some detailed calculations and masking. But as much as you can, you probably want to select what is definitely your subject because sometimes the AI just won't do it quite proper justice. And that's where we get this little option over here. And if you wanna change the size of this brush, you can use this slider over here or use your bracket keys and that'll change that. The last one over here is background and you notice that's blue, much like this. So this is the area that you're definitely going to remove. And if you want to enhance that a little bit, you can just kind of come over here where you know that you don't have any a uh, transition area and you can paint in just a little bit more and say, this is definitely stuff that you're going to wipe out when you're done with that. And you've got your mask that looks kind of like this. You can go over here to click portrait background. You've got your result. Now you can add another layer for your background. So we're going to come over here to layers and I've got this one that is just a uh, kind of a canvas background image. And you've got these little handles over here because sometimes the background you add may not have the same aspect ratio of the photo that you put in there. This one matches, sometimes they don't, and you might need to be able to drag these around. And that's what you have over here. So there's two things you need to do at this point. One, I'm gonna take my subject and put her on top. So you just simply drag and drop like that. And let's add that just a little bit further because it looks like I've got some transparent area. Up, oh, wrong one. I'm gonna select this layer and then I'm gonna drag that up a little bit more. And because it's just a background, it's I don't have to worry too much about that. And when I select this layer, you might see that the opacity is 50%. So we can just drag that all the way up. And if we have to drag that around a little bit, that's okay. I think I probably moved the this area a little bit. And that is it. So this one worked out fairly well. I don't see any highlight on the arms over here that need correction. 
I don't see anything on the hair that needs correction. It's a little bit wispy. You could probably mask that in or out if you wanted to, but that is one way that you could do something like this. So let's go ahead and click on this. And so we've got our layer properties. You can see where our subject is normal. I've got this background over here is also normal. There's other things you could do. You could possibly just put this in there without doing the portrait removal so much, and then maybe changing this blend mode to shine through as uh, overlay or soft light. So those are old tricks that you do in other tools. And that means you still have, if you select the correct layer, you still have all the other tools that you may want to use. So for example, if we want to come down here to our portrait tools, if we want to do some face enhancement, we can do that. If we want to do um, this Relight AI, you, could, you can still change your brightness near, your brightness far, and you can change the depth. Now with this particular uh, subject being on a flat background, you're not going to get too much that you're going to see out of that. But the idea is if you're picking something up and putting it in together, that might be something that you can need to work on to try and bring some of your, uh, if you get a little bit of a highlight on here. Now, if, if you're going to be compositing photos like this, you need to look at a few things. I mentioned already that the aspect ratio of the photo you use for your background needs to match what you're doing with your subject here. Also, look at the lighting and the color on your portrait and make sure that it matches the direction and the color quantity and color of a light in your background because nothing looks more fake than putting a portrait subject on it with one light on a background with another light. So if I shot her in a studio with some bright white lights and no color gels, and then I put her on a sunset scene, it's really not going to work. So that's something we can do. Let's uh, go back to our catalog and we're gonna take a look at, let's see how this works with a couple. And I'm playing with fire here because I haven't done this particular photo before. So we've got this, we're gonna come over here to our layer properties and we'll come over to masking and go to portrait background. And you can see the animation going through as it's analyzing. I've done this as a test only with a single portrait subject. I'm curious to find out what happens now that I have a, a couple in here. So we'll come over here to remove. And you know what? I think it actually did a pretty good job. I'm looking at the transparency over here and the edge around the hair. And I think it's pretty good. Let's take a look at our mask over here. So you can see, we could probably come into our object and just make sure there's a bit more that is definitely gonna be part of what we keep. I'm gonna make this brush a little bit smaller. And I'm not even certain that this is really necessary. This is kind of like me being overly cautious. So I've brushed some of that in. And every once in a while, depending upon what the person is wearing, you might see areas like this where you know that this is inside of the area that you're going to mask and you might just want to touch that up a little bit and make sure that that's included. Because if not, you may end up with a transparency inside of the interior of your subject that you don't want to see. So just kind of look and see where the edges are and that uh, something within this little yellow, orange, beige area, whatever you want to call that color, is where you want it to be. And then, of course, our background is going to be blue. We can see what that is. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to take this out of there. And let's go ahead and add probably the same image. And I'm going to bring that up to 100%. So that's our background. And let's add them up above it. And there they are fitting inside of it. So that is a quick look at how the portrait background replacement works. You can see with the layer properties, how the masking works. You've got a number of options and then you'll have mask actions where you can fill and invert and so forth if you want to do that. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. This image mapping that we're doing over here works very well. Now, the other part is really up to you. As I said, make sure that your background scene matches the lighting and the color of your subject. Otherwise, you may need to put over some kind of overlay or something that blends all the light together. 
So you might want to add another layer, put it in soft light or overlay and bring down some of the opacity. And that would give a color tone or color cast to everything. And that kind of helps you match the light out. Thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed this. And as I said, this is the last major feature of the portrait background replacement and also the layer enhancements that we're going to see in Luminar Neo. That doesn't mean that there won't be other enhancements or bugs, fixes, or updates going on, but there are no more major features that are expected for Luminar Neo. If you have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments below. Tell me if you think this is something that you're going to use or if you're going to just stick with other means to do this. And I'm also curious, this is portrait background is intentional for humans, but we also have that mask AI. Are you gonna use something like this maybe for pet portraits or other objects that you want to put in and composite? I'm curious to know how you're gonna use this. As I said, my name is William Beam. I appreciate you very much. If you like this video, please go ahead, click the like button. That tells the YouTube overlords we've done something right. They will share this with more people and hopefully it'll help them as well too. Thanks so much. I will see you in the next video.